Do you know that researchers have found small nematode worms in the central nervous system of every MS patient that they've tested? This is groundbreaking research that I'm going to share with you in this video. And the topic of this video is the cause of multiple sclerosis, part one, filarial worms and multiple sclerosis. And if we have not yet met, my name is Pam Bartha, and I'm the author of Become a Wellness Champion and the founder of Live Disease Free. And in order to help you appreciate what this research means for people that suffer with multiple sclerosis, I created some slides because pictures are worth a thousand words. So let's head over to the slides. Before I show you the pictures of these worms in the spinal fluid of MS patients, what I'd like to first do is review a little bit about what a parasite is. A parasite is any type of a microorganism that lives inside of us. So we're the host, they live inside of us and they're the parasite and they eat our food. And if they're present in small numbers, it's not a real problem for us. It's not gonna cause disease. When they're present and they start to multiply, they become more and more populated in our body and then we start to develop symptoms and then in time we develop some type of chronic disease. So again, a parasite is something that's living off of us and there are several different types of parasites that we're gonna talk about over the next few weeks. This is gonna be a series. We're gonna start with these filarial worms. So again, parasites can be different types of worms and protozoa, different types of fungi, and also different types of bacteria. So these are some of the topics we're gonna to talk about in the next few weeks. We're gonna talk about different types of fungus involved with multiple sclerosis, and also some of the vector-borne infections associated with Lyme disease that cause a lot of the neurological symptoms present in multiple sclerosis. There are at least eight different types of filarial worms that scientists have discovered that live inside humans. So we become the host. And really they're divided into three different groups depending on where they like to live in our body. Some of them like to live in our eyes and they can cause blindness. Others like to live in our lymphatic system and cause all kinds of swelling. Maybe you've heard of elephantitis. It's a horrible, horrible condition with extreme swelling. Also, they like to live under our skin. They can cause rashes and they can also cause hyper or hypopigmentation. Also, they like to live in our intestines and of course cause stomach issues or digestive issues. And they like to live in our blood vessels and also in the central nervous system. So depending on the type of worm, and where it lives, we can suffer with so many different types of symptoms. For example, rashes, arthritis, more pigmentation or hyperpigmentation or hypo, so less pigmentation of the skin, abdominal pain and fatigue. And in animals, these small nematodes cause all the neurological symptoms associated with multiple sclerosis when they're present in the central nervous system of animals. For the first time ever, these small filarial worms were discovered by Dr. Alan McDonald, who is a pathologist in the United States. And this is so incredibly profound because, as I mentioned, when these worms are present in animals, and veterinarians have known that when they're in the central nervous system of animals, they have all of the symptoms of MS. They may have extreme fatigue, they can go blind, they can have tingling and numbness and paralysis and weakness and spasticity. This is a quote from Dr. Alan McDonald. We have not found a case of multiple sclerosis that does not have worms in the spinal fluid. In this picture on the left hand side, you'll see a fertilized egg of a filarial worm. And on the right hand side, you'll see a zygote or an immature developing worm. In this next slide, on the left hand side, you'll see the very unhealthy spinal fluid of a patient who died of multiple sclerosis. It's very chalky, there's lots of debris. This could be eggs, worm debris, and also worm feces, or the waste products from worms. Spinal fluid should be clear. On the right hand side is an image of a nematode worm that's coiled up in the spinal fluid of a person that died of multiple sclerosis. 
The image on the left-hand side of this slide shows a nematode worm in the brain of somebody that suffered with multiple sclerosis. And along the top, you can see the mouth parts with hooks. And on the right-hand side, that green cluster is a cluster of worms. In this slide, on the left-hand side, you can see two worms in conjugation or two worms mating. These are all pictures that were taken from nematodes that Dr. Alan McDonald found in the spinal fluid and brains of people that died of multiple sclerosis. So this is quite shocking. The second image on the right are three worms in conjugation in the spinal fluid of somebody who had multiple sclerosis again. And this image is the very first in the world where Dr. Alan McDonald is showing triplicate of mating worms. Another profound discovery that Dr. Alan McDonald found was that inside these small filarial worms, they carry brillia, which is the bacteria that causes Lyme disease. So you can see in this picture, in this slide, on the top, you'll see the red arrows that's pointing to one worm and at the bottom you'll see the blue arrows pointing to a second worm and the green highlighted areas it that would be a fluorescent dye that is attracted to the dna of brillia which is the bacteria that causes lyme disease so think about it this way we become infected with these small worms through mosquitoes horse flies ticks probably more mosquitoes if we have a healthy, strong immune system, our immune system will deal with it. They'll recognize it in our blood as soon as it, we're exposed to them and we'll take care of it. But those of us that are really out of balance, maybe we've been on several courses of antibiotics, maybe way back when we were kids and where our gut microbiome is really out of balance, our immune system is taxed, it's not dealing with infections like it should, and then these worms will continue to grow, move into different parts of the body, they will establish themselves in the, in the intestines, but then whatever type of worm they are, they like to live in different areas, so some of them might like to live in our eyes, some of them make their way into the central nervous system, and they start to multiply and multiply. And at first, we may not have a lot of symptoms, maybe we just feel a little bit more tired, but then we start getting twitches. We might get twitches and then we might start getting cramps and we think, oh, we're deficient in calcium and magnesium. It's fine to take some extra minerals, but that might not be the cause of your spasms or your charley horses or cramping or twitching of muscles. And this is what we see. So many of us have been exposed to these parasites years ago through biting insects and maybe other possibilities like from animals too because a lot of us have animals in our life and again as the population is very small in our body we're fine we're we're coping but if they become more populated this is where we end up with the gucky chalky spinal fluid and lots of nematodes that are reproducing and causing a lot of damage in our central nervous system by themselves, but then they're also infecting us with Lyme disease. This is so profound. I really hope that you help us to get the word out. Share this video. If you found this video is really helpful for you, that it's given you some insights and hope, which I really hope it's given you hope, then please make sure to like it, subscribe, and share this with other people because we have to get the word out. We have to get more researchers studying this. I, I was diagnosed with multiple sclerosis 30 years ago, and I'm happy to share with you that by the grace of God and a lot of work and really in targeting these infections, I have been able to live MS-free for the past 30 years, and I help many others do the same. I've actually helped over 600 students in my Live Disease-Free Academy, and this is a course, a program where I help people to become the director of their health, to really support their body, first of all, to stop feeding the infections, then to support their body, and then to figure out which infections they're dealing with and to start treating them. So if you are really intrigued by 
these infections and you want to study more and maybe get to know me, watch some of my videos on our YouTube channel. If you're at the place where like, Pam, this makes perfect sense to me. I've been searching for answers. I've done so much work on myself. Nothing is working, but I've never treated infections. If that's you, watch my masterclass training. You'll see a link either ab above the video and below the video. Watch it and really start to learn more about Number one, these infections. Number two, what we do to treat them. Lots of case studies in my training and you can become a wellness champion whenever you're ready. I wanted to share a few successes of students that are in the academy right now so that you can have an idea of the possibilities. So some of them are treating infections, treating these worms and others, and some of them have just found me recently and they're just starting this journey. So one new student shared that she's been on the live disease free eating plan for three weeks and she shared I'm so thankful to report that I'm experiencing less numbness in my hands during the night. Again when we stop feeding these infections the inflammation starts to go down and then we start to have symptom improvement. Another student shared that her bowel movements are improving. Again, this is where a lot of the infection is, is in our intestines. She's sleeping better. She's sleeping for five hour stretches instead of two hour stretches. Many of you can relate to that because that's a common symptom, symptom of multiple sclerosis. She's already lost 30 pounds, which she wanted to. You don't have to lose weight if you don't want to, but for her, it's like a huge bonus. And she shared, I have not had joint pain for eight weeks now Yay! So she's ready to start treating. So she's been supporting the body and following the eating plan and now she's ready to start treating. One of our students in Europe shared that after he's on the second treatment cycle, so he did all the preparation work and then he started treating and just this last week he was able to lift up his left knee and do three sets of 10 lifts. And he said, it's been a long time since I've done that. Another student who is just graduating, she's been working in the academy for three months. She is symptom free. Not all the students are symptom free in three months. The sooner you catch disease, like the earlier you treat these parasites, the more recovery you will have and the quicker you can recover if you take the right steps. She shared, this has been a great week, symptom free starting the third treatment cycle. Again, it takes several treatment cycles to make sure that we really reduce not just the big worms, but also when the eggs hatch and the ones that are hiding under biofilms, etc. And then another student shared that this past week she's been on holidays with her husband and she forgot her cane many times in the hotel room. Another student shared that his bloating is non-existent. He had a growth in his eye and it's really reduced. The pores in his skin, especially on his nose, are becoming smaller and his skin is less oily and he doesn't have cravings for sweets anymore. And he also shared that the psoriasis rash on his legs is really starting to improve. And these are all really good signs. It just means the infections are still there, but they're not as active and the treatment phase will be more effective. Really important to prep before we treat. Then another student shared, so this is somebody who doesn't have that match. She has Lyme disease. And she shared, I've been following the eating plan really well and doing great this week. My energy is up from the last week and I'm feeling like my body is now thriving off the food that I'm eating in the eating plan. Today was the first day I woke up without any back pain for a long time. So she has not started treating. She's just beginning the journey. If you are listening to those successes and you're like, Pam, I've been searching for an answer. I finally believe I found it. It makes so much sense to treat parasites and fungal overgrowth, bacterial infections and parasites. So if you're at that place, watch my masterclass training and it shows you how you can connect with me and how you can start and you can become a wellness champion and treat those infections and make this your very best year in many, many years. On my next video, I'm gonna be sharing part two of the cause of multiple sclerosis, talking about multiple sclerosis and other parasitic worms.